In the news this week, AMD has announced a brand new Pro Thread River CPUs, which means that the total number of the Zento SKUs they have available for desktops at least, is now around 18 and a half. While in other news, new rumours have surfaced about the new flagship card from NVIDIA, the RTX 3080... the F RTX 3090, the... The new NVIDIA flagship for next gen is apparently a... a 3090, despite them using the XX ATTI naming scheme for literally generations right right I, I i i see how it is nvidia we need to talk you see most of the people who buy your graphics cards are dumb and if there's one thing that helps such people it's pattern recognition and knowing what means a card is good and what means a card isn't good so when you start throwing in a uh, 16 series cards and ti's and non-ti's and supers and non-super variants all for the same number and then you also come out with something like this well i don't know what to say apart from why but for once nvidia may have a decent reason for this very very weird naming scheme and that reason is very very exciting because in the past they've used this xx90 stylization for card names for dual gpu graphics cards like the gtx 690 nice now that card was an old kepler based beast and now that gpu technology has really matured maybe dual gpu cards are on the way back I mean, we've seen that even, I mean, even Apple clearly trusts them, seeing how they included dual GPU cards by AMD in the new Mac Pro. And if it is true, boy, am I excited to see exactly what they'll bring. And there's a lot of rumors that would suggest so. Not only by the whole, you know, 90 naming scheme, but also like I mentioned in my previous video, talking about RTX 3000 experience confirmed that some of the more high-end cards are supposed to have what's known as a traversal coprocessor, or basically this auxiliary second chip on a card that's supposed to really boost ray tracing performance. Now we don't know much about it right now, but from what we do know, it's supposed to only be a feature of a high-end card, like maybe a flagship card, where the second GPU is actually this traversal code processor. Sure, maybe it's not a normal GPU like in other 90-based NVIDIA cards, but it is still another processor right there on the PCB. So that's one way they may do it, but honestly, seeing how much technology has gone forward, I am expecting them to be able to have both the coprocessor and also a normal second GPU on the RTX 3090. Additionally, it would just make sense. I feel like now more than ever, the world is actually prepared for it, especially now that SLI is becoming more and more just useless, as you have to buy a second card and the SLI scaling isn't always great. And unless you're using NVLink, you don't even get the VRAM of the second card. So if you have two 11 gig cards, for example, well, you only have 11 gigs of VRAM. Not to mention, that also takes up more space in your PC. So having a dual GPU card is a great solution to that, as you'll be able to have two GPUs on a single 16x PCI slot. Plus, of course, since it's going to be a flagship, it'll probably have tons of VRAM as well. And that could really mean the end of SLI on the high end, especially since the truth is that even though SLI and even NVLink links are becoming really, really fast, they still have to hop between two graphics cards, so of course there will be always some latency penalty compared to the two GPUs just being neighbours right there on the same PCB. So, because of that, a dual GPU solution just makes more sense. And, as I mentioned recently in my PC Gen 4 video, link in the icons by the way, the new 4.0 link that the new RTX 3000 cards will work on will help a lot. Because, basically, in the past, when you had two cards in SLI, they both run at 8x, and that is Gen 3. While since PCIe Gen 4 is double the bandwidth of PCIe Gen 3, when you have a single card running 16x, they basically have both these GPUs being able to utilize around 16x of PCIe Gen 3 bandwidth. So that's way, way more bandwidth, which is GPUs will need, because they are, of course, the flagships, and of course, will require them as data, and all of that on a single 16x connection. So that's a total of about, what, 32 PCIe Gen 3 lanes worth of bandwidth, compared to the only 16 that two cards in SLI would use on previous generations of cards. So that's pretty fantastic, and that will allow for way more data to reach 
a single graphics card with two GPUs. Not to mention that physical space will be decreased. If you wanted to water cool it, for example, you also just need one graphics card block instead of two. And speaking of cooling, that's one thing that's very interesting about it because, of course, with two GPUs, there will be some major cooling needed. That would mean that they'll probably have to engineer some very, very good cooling solution. Maybe even one that's a bit strange looking or foreign to us. Like, you know, maybe something we haven't seen before but would work for dual GPU setups. Something that just seems weird for now but would make sense in the future. Hmm. So yeah, I think it could also explain the weird cooler design we've seen floating around. So I don't know about you but I'm really excited for these graphics cards. I probably won't be getting one because, let's be honest, why would Nvidia send a graphics card to a such a small YouTuber? So hey, if you want to help my channel finally grow so many years, then maybe consider subscribing, liking this video, all that st good stuff helps. And also maybe check out my Patreon down in the description below, as in one dollar month also goes a long way. Down there you'll find my Discord if you want to talk to me or it's about this or whatever else really. So I guess I will leave this quick little video here. If you enjoyed it, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone. Good. Bye.